Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at the Inwin MR36, a 360mm AIO cooler, which is new on the market from Inwin, and this is actually the first product we've seen from Inwin in two years, almost to the date of this recording, which is absolutely criminal. Really enjoy seeing Inwin stuff, very good quality, and generally very pleasing to the eye. They've got something which they really tend to take attention to detail with things like those small aesthetic pieces. And if you've seen any of the in-win cases of the last 10, 15, 20 years, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They do some absolutely insane things. And they do some very much bulk standard things as well, depending on what it is you're after. But I do feel that in-win do go that little extra mile when it comes to style and do tend to kind of jump off of the beaten track a little bit and try things new, which is actually a really good thing. With this, they've not really tried anything new. What they've done is taken an amalgamation of all the things which we know in the industry that just really work well and work really nicely together and put it into a rather cost-effective package. Now, at the moment, at the time of recording, the estimated street price on this is somewhere in the region of about €120. Euros. I'm not entirely sure what the UK price is. Still waiting for stockists to actually have these available. So this is very, very new on the market. As soon as there's some updated pricing or availability, I'll put some links in the video description so you can check out it for yourselves. There will be links, however, for Inwin site directly, so you can go in there and check it out. They also have links to other stockists and they have their own e-store as well. So if you're in certain regions, then you may find it actually cheaper to buy from Inwin than to actually buy it from a normal retail store, which is excellent. So anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's get on. We've got three segments to do in this video. So the first bit is going to be the unboxing. The second part is going to be the installation and obviously the third bit is going to be the testing and the final conclusion or whether or not it's actually worth you spending your money on this piece of hardware. So let's get straight in and do the unboxing and see what it's all about. So as you can see, this is the MR36 liquid cooling kit. As you can see, 360mm radiator. You've got an illuminated pump housing as well, although it's not technically not a pump housing, but people will know it is that. So that is effectively your block. The actual pump on this has actually been moved away from the CPU and actually into the radiator, which has a few benefits, one of which being noise and also heat, because obviously a pump is a moving part, it's an electrical part, so it does generate its own heat, which is something else which the actual housing has to try and dissipate somehow. Whereas if it's in the radiator, it's basically being dissipated straight at the top of the case or wherever you've got your radiator placed, so it's better to have it there than actually on your CPU. I should also mention there's a couple of versions of this available. There is the MR36, which is the one we've got here, 360mm. There's also an MR24 as well, which is a 240mm. So if your PC case isn't quite large enough to facilitate one of these, then there is a slightly smaller version. Now, something else as well, the fans on this, they're using the Neptune AN120s. These are, seem to be great fans. And I've actually plugged one in separately from this, just as a little test, just to see what it's like and they are very, very quiet. And even when they're on their kind of highest setting, of which that is 2,200 RPMs, which is uh, pretty insane, they're very quiet, even at that high RPM, which is yeah, kind of weird. Something which I find very odd about the fans is the fact that their PWM range is very unusual indeed. And it kind of took me by surprise. I think, no, that, that's, surely that's got to be a misprint. But no, it's not. It's genuine. So these have an RPM range of 900 to 2200 rpm now normally if you have a fan which starts its rpm range at 900 it's bad times it normally is sounding absolutely horrendous but with this with their new blade design it actually is silent at 900 rpm which is kind of weird not sure you better be watching this because yeah this is some pretty special stuff so change all the design of the blades we'll take a look at that a little bit later so yeah, you get the basic idea of what it's all about uh, you do get a three-year warranty with this one, well, just in case I uh, forget to mention it later on. Just I looked at the number three and I thought, yes, three-year warranty. Anyway, wittering on on the back, so we've got all the dimensions there. 397 mil is the important one for most people, so that is the uh, total length, including where the pipes go, etc. So if you've got 397 mil, this will fit. If you don't, it won't. Don't think just because your system holds three 120 mil fans that automatically it will take a 360 mil rad. That isn't the case. So do make your measurements. So 379 millimeters is what you want to be looking for in your case or more, if possible, to give you that little bit of wiggle room. There's the specifications and also what it fits. So this fits pretty much most sockets on the market which are currently available. So we're looking at pretty much everything from Intel over the last 15 to 20 years, up and including the LGA 1700, 
including 14th gen, 13th gen, then going back to LGA 1200, all those sockets, 11th, 10th gen, 9th gen, all that kind of stuff, all included, all the way down to 11.5X. So if you've got anything which fits on the 11.5X socket, you're fine. In terms of AMD, it's using the standard retention clamps, which come on the motherboard. So this will kind of do anything from AM5, which is currently available now, all the way back to probably old Athlon 64s, possibly. I think they still even use the same retention clips back then, so potentially it'd work on that. Really sickly, AM4, AM5, no problems at all. AM3, AM3+, plus, yeah, no issues there whatsoever. I can't imagine anyone going further back than that, but if you want to, potentially it will fit as well. As you'd expect, connection-wise, it's all going to be standard stuff on here. So you're looking at PWM connectors for the fans. You're looking at a DC-style PWM connector for the actual pump. And for the addressable RGB, praise the Lord, it's all your normal 3-pin, 5-volt addressable RGB with actually a little special clasp so they don't fall apart, which is excellent. We'll take a look at those next. Okay, so let's go through the unboxing process and take a look at what we actually get. So as you guess, obviously, radiator, pipes, cooling plate, or pump head, you get the general idea. That's the bit that goes on your CPU. There are three included Neptune fans, as we've said already. These actually are pretty nice. Very new designs. The blades have got the closed ends, so that keeps the static hair pressure in. Massive central hub. Uh, from what I can tell, it is slightly opaque. It looks like there is a, a four-pole motor in there, from what I can tell. So that's a pretty decent. You can actually feel it when it spins. You can feel that kind of the magnetic forces in there. So yeah, it's a nice strong magnet in there. Again, RPM range 900 to 2200 RPM, which still blows my mind that it starts at 900 RPM, but it is very silent. We'll hear all that later. Don't worry, that's absolutely fine. You've got rubber sections in all the corners, as you'd expect. And on the back there, you've got the Neptune AN120 logo on there. Um, only four supporting pillars on the back, which is good to allow airflow through and not to have any of those odd turbulent noises, which uh, we tend to get if you've got more than four, five, six, or whatever, starts to get a little bit on the noisy side. It tells you the direction of the fans, and you've got the in-wind logo stamped on there, etc. When it comes to the wiring, so they make this so nice and easy to do, all daisy chainable, so you have your male and female connections on there, so when you're daisy chaining them together, actually on the radiator, the cables will pretty much only go to the next fan, and that is kind of it. So you don't have loads of wires floating around everywhere, or loads of wires that you've got to fish down the back of your PC case and then try and figure out how to get them all into your hub. Don't worry about that, it's absolutely fine. Essentially, you're gonna be left with pretty much two wires at the end of it. One for PW, well, three. One for PWM for the fans, one for PWM DC for the pump, and the other one for addressable RGB. So it's gonna be a pretty straightforward affair once it's all connected up together. So that's the fans out of the way. Let's take a look at the radiator. So as you can see, pretty much standard affair, nice squared off edges on here. Nothing out of the ordinary, completely standard in terms of actual fitting. So 25 mil depth, which is completely standard. So you shouldn't have any issues there. You don't have any extra weird thickness, which you do with some other brands. High density fins as well for extreme cooling potential. I think that was the words that was on the website. And on the top here, this is where the pump goes. Now this is actually very cool. For those of you that are thinking, oh, that's weird. Why is the pump not in the, uh, the coal plate? That doesn't make sense. What's going on? It actually makes a ton of sense and in terms of longevity now like i said this has got a three-year warranty that's cool three years is excellent but what happens after three years when you've spent about 100 pounds or so for a component you don't want to be kind of getting twitchy bum after the three years have run out is it going to die what's going to go on now the beauty of these is they're really easy to service because you don't even have to take the cpu section off you can just leave all that intact drop your radiator down a couple of mil loosen off the rad screws, or just take the whole thing out if you want to. And there's literally four screws on there. There's gonna be another four screws underneath for a gasket. And then you can actually take the pump out. So if for some reason is maybe getting clogged up or whatever it might be, maybe you're just one of those people who likes to tinker and you wanna replace the fluid. I know I like doing that regularly on these kind of AIOs just to make sure that it's not getting all gunky inside. Very, very easy to work on. Excellent positioning. And also because the pump is here, it does throw up a lot of options in terms of mounting. Now because where the pump is, the actual impeller is at the bottom of the radiator. So in terms of air, even if like half of this radiator is full of air at the top, it's still gonna be getting the water from the bottom. So that is absolutely fine. And you can see it does go right down to the bottom. 
Something else I should mention as well, so some of you are probably thinking, well, that's dumb because that's blocking airflow. Well, it isn't because, as we've seen, there's a massive central hub on these fans which goes directly over the top of there. So you're not actually gaining or losing anything in that section because that's blocked off anyway and the fan has got a hub there. So there's no airflow going through it. So you're going to get the natural cooling effect from the fans surrounding it. But yeah, it isn't a problem. Nothing to be concerned about. Also, again, because of the location of it, basically silent because it's not going to be pumping loads of bubbles around very very low noise rpm range on this up to 4200 rpm did some little testing on this a little bit earlier to fire it up on the system just to see what the rpm range was like and yep no problems at all that was what we were looking at around about 4200 uh, went down to basically zero so you can tailor this down to zero which is probably avoid worth avoiding you don't want your pump to stop Whereas, alternatively, on the other side, the fans actually would not go down lower than 900 RPM. So it would have been nice for the PWM chips to be maybe swapped around. Maybe take the PWM chip out of this, put it in the fans so they can go to 0 dB, and maybe put the uh, 900 RPM in here so that is a fail-safe, rather than being able to basically stop, which is something you don't really want from a radiator. But anyway, that is by the by. Just make sure you set it up in your BIOS. Set the pump to 100%, no problems. It isn't going to get uh, burnt out any quicker. It's just going to be a constant flow going through the whole system. That is absolutely fine. And in fact, it's the rotational thing being strained by it slowing down and speeding up, which actually wears out the motor quicker. So set it to 100%. You're not going to hear it. It's going to be absolutely fine. A three-pin connector on there. So three-pin DC goes into an AIO header on the motherboard or a PWM header. Just make sure you set it in the BIOS to DC rather than PWM, and you'll be absolutely fine. The pipes themselves are very nice and flexible, so uh, yeah, no kinking to the pipes, so you can pretty much do what you like with those. Also, the actual pump head, or the cooling plate, or whatever you want to call it, uh, very slim. So even if you're using a slightly smaller system, is isn't going to be a problem. Sometimes you get these and they've got these crazy big extrusions on them, but yeah, this is fine. Actually quite a nice looking thing, you've got like a knurled finish around the outside edge. This rotates as well, so there is an illumination on there, underneath there, which uh, you can choose to turn on or not. If you don't like RGB, just leave it off, it's absolutely fine. You don't have to connect it up even, and have it just completely blanked out. On the bottom, circular uh, heat sink there, so just peel off the back end before you install it, obviously. And something else which is nice, which I'm just looking on now, if for some reason you have to do any maintenance this in the future, all of the screws on there are just normal screws, like hexagonal ones. There's no security screws, so if you do have to take it apart because there's gunk in there, or you just want to do routine maintenance, flush the system out, then you can take that cold plate off very easily. The cold plate is actually being redesigned as well by Inwin. They've put some uh, some new extrusions on there, um, basically like micro fine channels, so loads and loads of surface area. So in theory, it should do extremely well. Like I've said before, the only cable actually coming off of this section is your addressable RGB one. So that just plugs into your motherboard. You've also got a pass-through with those little locking connectors as well, which is uh, very nice indeed. So it means they're not going to accidentally get separated in the PC and cause some sort of short circuit. So yeah, overall, I think that is a great design. There is also, as well, a bleed stroke fill port there. And there isn't a sticker over it saying void if removed. So if you want to... Uh, bleed the radiator or top up the fluid at some point, you can do so without voiding your warranty, which is awesome. So we've got some very cool stuff there. Let's take a look at the actual mounting hardware and see if it's going to be a, an absolute nightmare or going to be easy to install. Now, we'll start off with AM4 stuff, AM5, because that is going to be the easiest of the lot. So of all these brackets here, basically that is all you need for AM4 and this bit here. That's kind of it for securing the pump to it's not even a pump, securing the cold plate to the AM4 setup. So I'll give you some close-ups of that so you can see what that's all about. But essentially, when it comes to actually sticking on the brackets, pretty straightforward thing to do. So there is like a little lug, like a horseshoe shape on there. And basically the horseshoe shape goes around the outside and with the two pump outlets being at the bottom. And there we go, that just snaps into place. So yeah, pretty straightforward and simple to do. You can, of course, like I said, depending on how you want to mount this, you can twist the uh, LED on there so it all matches up and looks as it should do. If you need to take it off, just hold on to the pump and a little bit of firm pressure on the sides there. And nearly lost it. 
There you go, that comes off pretty straightforward. And then you can replace it with the Intel one, which we'll take a look at next, actually, in terms of Intel stuff. So there is the horseshoe bracket. This is universal for kind of every single Intel socket, whether it is uh, 11.5X or the latest and greatest LJ1700. I think with these as well, because of the way they're designed, if there is any dramatic changes in any of the socket layouts from AMD or Intel going forward, then I think this will be relatively easy to adapt. From what we know already, the next iteration of the Intel processors, uh, which is gonna be for 15th gen, is gonna be a new socket, but it does seem that it's gonna be using LGA 1700 style cooling. So yeah, this is gonna have a, a lot of longevity. Obviously AM5 just come out, and Intel wise, you're gonna be good for at least another, I would guess, five years or so. Anyway, so that is for Intel. Also, when it comes to Intel, you've got some mountain brackets to go on the back. So there's one for your LGA 1200 and below, and then you've got another one which is for your LGA 1700. Uh, that'll be the 1700, I think. It is printed on there, it tells you which ones they are. So yeah, just have a closer look onto there, and you can see exactly what they are. You're probably seeing those from the close-ups I filmed a little bit earlier. Uh, when it comes to the actual mountings, again, very straightforward. You've got one set of mountings, so that is for the fans and attaching the radiator into your case. Very easy to do, so that's for that bag. And all the others are clearly labelled up, so you've got that one there. So that is, hard to see, LGA1700. Like I said, clear to read. It is actually clear to read unless you have stupid studio lights, in which case it makes things a little bit more difficult. So this LGA1700, this one I think is going to be LGA... That is LJ2011 and 2066. And that one is going to be the last one. So that's going to be the LJ1200 and the 115X. So pretty much all covered there. Very straightforward, really, if you think about it. It's not a great deal here, which is going to be kind of leftover, depending on obviously which socket you go for. So it's nice to see they haven't wasted a lot of stuff. There's also included the extensions. So you probably looked at the fans earlier and think, well, those are cables are darn short. Well, yes, they are, but there is an extension cable included for addressable RGB and also for your PWM signal, so you've got no worries there. There's also a dinky little thing here of in-wind thermal compound, should you wish to use it. They also state on there that the thermal conductivity is 5 watts per meter Kelvin. Other than that, the one thing that you're not going to have to hand, there's no instructions. Unfortunately, if you want instructions, there is a QR code on the box. You can also get the instructions from the in-wind site. This I'm not too sure how I feel about it. I would have rather have seen some instructions rather than a bit of cardboard over the radiator. But that's just me. Obviously QR codes, not everyone's keen on using QR codes. Would have been nice to have had some instructions on the box or at least just a, a web address for the instructions. That would have been kind of cool as well. But if you're buying this and you haven't got a PC or a working PC anyway, then you're a little bit stuck if you haven't got your mobile phone with you. But it is relatively straightforward to do. And as such, I think it's time I stopped jibber jabbering on and actually got to install this in the PC. Then we can test the darn thing. Right, so let's get on and do that next. So for the installation part of things, the first thing you'd really want to think about is actually the layout of the cooler in your system. So whether you're going to go with it like that or whether you're going to go with it like that and depending on the layout of your system. So I would say the best thing to do, get your PC case, kind of offer it up and see which looks best for you. Now, for me personally, I'm going to be doing this in my Lianli uh, 216 case, which is facing the same way as that one behind me. So I'm going to be doing it like this. So we're going to have pipes at the front, and then that is going to coil round into where the CPU area is. You can do it either way you want to, but if you kind of work it out in your head, it's a little bit easier rather than taking basically 12 sets of screws out when you want to take the fans off, which is a real pain in the backside. And also, there is a pass-through. So where the pump is... You've got little pass-throughs on both sides, so depending if you're going to be mounting it one way or the other, you can have it so the cable comes out of this little track, and then you can put it to the other side. So for easier cable management, just take it out through this side. So just punch it through there. And then you can obviously have the cable coming out and going down towards the back of your PC or to the pump head, or whatever it is. Basically, just making it so that the cable comes out the right side, rather than it being stuck here and then you install it and then having to kind of root the cable right on the outside which looks a little bit ugly. So it's nice that they're giving you the option there of uh, rooting it through either side. So now we know which way we're going to be orientating this, we can now install the fans. Okay, so here is the fans in position. So 
make sure that you're on the right side. So this is our outlet for the pump and put the fans on the top of the radiator, lay them out in position. You'll notice with these pass-through cables, so if I disconnect these in a minute, you can see what it's all about. So you've got your first cables there. If you're not too sure which way you're gonna be going with the wire in, the easiest way of working it out is to take the two extension cables, which are here at the end, so we disconnect those. So you can see these are the ends which are gonna be connecting to your motherboard. So that is your five volt addressable RGB header and also your PWM for your fans or CPU fans. So those, if you grab the other end of the cable, that's the ones you're gonna be using first of all. So go to the very last fan on the chain. And then because you've got a female socket there from your PC, you're gonna to wanna to be obviously putting a male plug in. And that goes then all the way back. So that's gonna leave you with a female connection. So you just plug in the next male from the next fan along, etc., etc., all the way along. So the last one on there is gonna be another male into the female socket. And then this leaves you with the last one on the chain and also the ARGB with the pins covered, which is what you wanna have. Going back to what I was saying earlier about the, uh, the clasp connection. So you can just about see on there, there is a very, very tiny little ridge. And on these connections, you can see there's a little lever. And all you do is put them together and you hear them snap together nicely. And a little bit of a tug and they don't wanna come apart. So that is gonna hold them in place. So that's excellent. So that is pretty much it. So we've got our three pin DC, which is gonna to go to our AIO or uh, pump head on the motherboard. And then on the other end of this daisy chain, we've now got our PWM and our addressable RGB. So that's just three connections. It looks a little bit more complicated and actually I haven't connected this one up. So let's connect up the last one in the chain. So there we are, there is the pins there. Snap them together, and you should hear a little bit of a click, didn't on that one, but it is firmly held together. So yeah, excellent stuff. So that is really straightforward. The next thing to do is to get the horseshoe, which is this bit here. Now we're gonna be doing this on an Intel system. We're using our 13900K. So we're basically gonna slot this over the top. And you'll see actually on the side here of the actual pump or pump head or cooling plate or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, there is a little slot down the side there. So with your pipes at the bottom, as you can see there, what you're gonna wanna do is to get the uh, the horseshoe and stick that over the top into those slots and just push it all the way down and it kind of clicks into place. And you know it's in place because you won't be able to pull it off easily. The only way you'll get it off is by some uh, additional force. So that is basically it. So now we can get ready and put this actually into the PC. Of course, I've got to put these screws in the fans to hold those in place. That's really straightforward. Pretty much uh, anyone can do that. So I'll do that off camera to speed this up. Okay, so we've uh, taken out the old CPU cooler, which was in here. So that's pretty cool. Nice open space. Now at this point, my suggestion would be because we have got uh, some wires here to uh, deal with, it's probably a good idea to actually route some of them into the right places now. If you've got a case which doesn't allow you a great deal of room at this top section, by the time you've got your radiator and your fans in the top, it's gonna to be a little bit problematic to get to some of the areas. So at least with this as it is now, uh, it's actually pretty open. So I'm gonna get this as close as I can. And I'm gonna take my three pin first of all and plug it into the header for the pump. If you're not too sure which header it is, if you look normally underneath, you'll find the PWM controller. And this one in very, very small writing, so CPU fan on the left and AIO water pump on the right. So we're gonna plug this into the four pin header, even though it is only a three pin, we're gonna stick that in there anyway. And we can change that in the bars later. And the next one is gonna be the addressable RGB. So fortunately the addressable RGB we've got just here at the top, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that one in also. There's that one plugged in. If you've got a hub or something on the back, you can always plug it in in the back should you wish to. And the last one is gonna be our PWM 
which is coming off of the fans, which is this one, the four pin. So this is gonna go into your CPU header. Now the reason we put it into the CPU header, even though it's a radiator, not a CPU fan, is because the CPU header specifically is pretty much always controlled by the temperature which is hitting on your processor. So regardless of what the actual fans are attached to, if you want whatever's cooling to be reactive to the heat of the CPU or the cooling of the CPU, you always plug it into the CPU header, which is in this top section. So that's those plugged in. So now we've got our cables, we can quite easily pull those through after and manage those. But that just, for me, makes it a little bit easier. And then we can just grab the rest of it and kind of edge it into position. And once it's in place, we can start putting some screws in and then we can tidy up the wires a little bit more. As you can see, with the radiator in this position, trying to get to some of those headers is gonna be an absolute pain in the backside. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws in the top here and uh, then we can finish off the rest of the CPU block installation. Okay, so now we can put the screws in the top so you get 12 of these included. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And because Calf is holding the camera because it's pretty high up there, just go through and do this very quickly. So just get a couple in there started to begin with. If you do one at each end, and then you can go through and do the rest at your leisure. You don't have to put all of them in, it's entirely up to you if you just want to put a few in. As long as it's actually physically held in place, then it's absolutely fine. I'm going to carry on doing this, and then we can finish off doing the actual pump head. Okay, so now we're going to be doing the uh, the back section. So we need one of these. So this one is the one that says LGA 1700. There you go, just about to see that on there, printed in there. So this goes on the back of the back plate. So this remains in place. You can see there's some adhesive from uh, a previous installation here. So probably a good idea to get rid of some of that. You can see there's double sided on there. So that just holds it in place. You don't necessarily have to do this if you don't want to get tape actually onto the metals or whatever. Uh, this case actually, unfortunately, comes up a little bit high for this section here. So there is enough clearance, but it is a little, a little bit awkward, as you can see there. So that's in. Just give that a little press for a couple of seconds, just to make sure the adhesive's held. So that is in. Those should be snug against the motherboard and there shouldn't be any flexing or movement. So that side is done. So now we can flip it around and take a look at the inside. So now for this side, we need to attach some mounting pillars. So we have a packet here, which says Intel LGA 1700, uh, reasonably clearly on there. If you can't see the screws there, it actually is much clearer. Anyway, so LGA 1700, because that is the socket we're using. And you should find there are four of these. And these just simply screw in to the four holes on the motherboard. So let's go ahead and get those started. Unfortunately, it's difficult to get the camera and my fingers in there at the same time. So I'm literally just turning and tightening those up thumb tight. So you can see that one in there. Let's see if I can get you in a little bit closer. There we go. And now do the bottom two. And just finger and thumb tight. That's all it needs. And the last one is going to be down in this corner. There we go. And if you want to, you can go around after just to make sure they're in firmly. That's fine. So now we can um, get the processor head or the cooling pump head assembly ready. So what we're going to want to do is to uh, remove this protective film. Like so. And that's uh, nice and shiny, prepared. You can, of course, if you want to at this point, get some isopropyl alcohol and give that a clean if you're concerned there's any contaminants on there, such as adhesives and all that kind of stuff. Um, I won't be bothering, but obviously if you want to, you can do it. It feels pretty clean and smooth to me. Whilst we're getting this ready, grab hold of this pack here. This is the mounting hardware, and we're gonna need those four spring-loaded screws. Now is the time to apply some thermal compound. So we're gonna put on some MX6. So we've got our thermal paste on there now, so all we need to do is to now put the pump head or the cold plate actually in place. And I'm not too sure if I'm gonna do it with the tubes to the side. I think I actually prefer that. So I'm gonna stick it on like that. You can hold it in place 
whilst you're trying to find the screws which you've misplaced from earlier. Okay, so now we've got this in place. We've got our th four thumb screws. Basically, what we're going to do is do those three turns at a time until it's fully wound down. Now, really, you should go opposing sides. So if you start here, then go there, then maybe there, then there. But just basically in some sort of crisscross pattern is absolutely fine. So do three turns. One, two, three. And do the same on the opposing side. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do it this side. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then just keep on doing that until the uh, the screws hit some resistance. And when it gets to the very end, it's just a, like a hard stop. So don't over tighten it. And that'll be absolutely fine. So then you can put your addressable RGB cable. You can wire that through, daisy chain it to the rest of the fans if you want to. Plug it into another header or as I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to plug it into the hub on the back of the Yanli 216. But that effectively is it. So now we can get this thing fired up, do some testing, and we'll come back with some results. Okay, so we're back and we've done some testing with the Inwin MR36. And as you can see, it's uh, now in the PC behind me. This is normally my daily driver, my video bed, it's in PC. So I figured I'll just uh, put it on show so you can see what it looks like with this uh, absolutely tremendous cooler installed. And it's very easy to install as you've possibly seen if you haven't fast forwarded through the installation section even for the intel setup relatively straightforward to do and i really do like those addressable rgb clips the ones that just clamp together i think that's a very very nice touch and uh, takes some of that guesswork out of it and also if you maybe stretch the cables a little bit when you're trying to put it inside of your rig there's basically no chance of them coming apart unless you give them a really really strong tug but in normal use they should be absolutely fine Cable management wise, absolutely great, no problems there. And because of the minimal amount of wires, only three wires to connect up. Two ARGB wires, one from the pump head, one from the actual radiator fans themselves, and one for the PWM connection. So wiring is pretty much simplified. In terms of noise profile, actually very quiet indeed. The new pump, which is mounted up in that top radiator, pretty much silent unless you get extremely close up to it. And even when it's on the highest revolutions, it's very difficult to hear. And in fact, the PC at the moment with the side off, you can basically hear nothing. It's kind of silent, so that is excellent. In terms of at full blast, not a great deal of noise. The pitch of the fans is really nice. It isn't very intrusive. You can just hear that whooshing of air going through the radiator, which unfortunately is the nature of the beast. If you force air through any kind of slots or grill, then you are gonna have some kind of turbulence and that noise is gonna be slightly evident, but it isn't intrusive and certainly it seems quieter than a lot of the other AIOs I've tested recently. I would love to get my tester on it and actually give you some decibel ratings, but really because of the room we're in and also the variables is very hard to control, but trust me, it is very quiet indeed. Other things I liked was the simplicity, the actual tubes coming from the radiator, very flexible and managed to twist around into that location there. And I think it looks absolutely great. Now in terms of the performance levels, I've actually tested this with the previous cooler, which I had based in the system, left all the settings exactly as they were. And this is compared with the Thermaltake TH360 ARGB radiator, which is a little bit more expensive here in the UK. So let's take a look at some of the Cinebench results. So with the TH360, 360 ARGB, Cinebench R23, we scored 34,897 points, and that was against MR36, which allowed us a little bit of a jump there to 35,838 points. So almost a thousand points extra there, so that is a pretty good show in. Let's take a look at the temperatures and see how they scale. The lowest recorded temperatures with the MR36, we're looking at 31 degrees Celsius. With the thermal tape, we're looking at 30 degrees Celsius, so one degree in it, which is, in my mind, within the kind of margin of error territory. The highest recorded temperatures, this is after a five minute loop of Cinebench, we're looking at 97 degrees Celsius for the MR36 and 94 degrees Celsius with the TH360. The TH360 was slightly limited in terms of wattage, we're looking at 328 watts, whereas with the MR36, it did let the processor stretch its legs a little bit more, hence why we got the slightly better score, and we did use up to 333 watts of thermal power. You're probably thinking that those temperatures are a little bit on the excessive side, and to be honest with you, they absolutely are. The 13900K is a ridiculous processor, and if it can do, it'll just use as much power as possible. On the motherboard itself, I've just set it back to its default, so there's no enhancements, no restrictions or anything, and those were the temperatures it got to. And with it in that setup, 
temperatures do tend to run away because the processor is just nuts. But if you do go in and actually change the wattage or the limits, so set it to the motherboard having a tower cooler, which on this particular processor limits it to 288 watts, actually the temperatures do come down significantly. We're looking at about 83 degrees Celsius as the highest temperature, and bizarrely we score a little bit more, heading more towards 38,000 points up from our 35 previously. So actually testing this cooler is actually quite a difficult thing to do when you're comparing like with like, but certainly I think this cooler is well worth a look and it is gonna come down to pricing and availability. Inwin are one of those companies where there aren't a huge amount of stockists. You can, of course, like I said earlier, you can pick up Inwin products from their own EU store and also their US stores. So do check those out. I'll put links for those in the video description. And I suppose all I can do is wrap this up by saying thank you very much to Inwin for sending this over for review purposes. I think this is a cracking cooler. And if you're actually looking for one and you can pick one up at a decent price, it gets my recommendation. So there you go. That has been the Inwin MR36 360mm AIO cooler. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.